What a crazy day it has been. The Orioles just sold their team to David Rubenstein. And as of 30 seconds ago, they just signed Corbin Burns. Hell yeah, Orioles. Let's get into it. So I am I'm reading this right now. Um, Corbin Burns is going to the Orioles, traded by the Brewers. I'm reading as this goes. This is it's it's 5:24, posted at 5:19. So shortstop Joey Ortiz and left-hander DL Hall, the rookie, uh, is going to Milwaukee, and they're getting Corbin Burns in Baltimore. Huh? That's pretty crazy. Didn't expect that. Burns 29, 32 games last year. Uh, pitched a 3.39 ERA, uh, ERA, which is great. 200 strikeouts and 193 uh, innings pitched. But yeah, he won the Cy Young in 2021 with a 2.4 ERA. This is a huge pickup for the Orioles. This whole thing is about the Orioles, and now they're just making even more moves. I don't know if D.L. Hall is the right pick for the Brewers. I thought they were pretty set with who they had. Maybe the Brewers just needed a shortstop really bad, and that's why they got Joey Ortiz out of this. I don't exactly see it entirely. Corbin Burns is, is now an Oriole, and guess who else is? Uh, David Rubenstein, or Rubenstein, however you want to say it. He just purchased the team for $1.725 billion, which is a third of his entire net worth. Pretty awesome, considering that um, John Angelos is a terrible terrible owner that nobody likes in baltimore and baltimore you guys have been suffering just like a lot of these other teams for years now in fact john took over in 2019 for his dad because he was no longer able to uh take care i don't say manage the team but you know be there for the affairs of the team and ever since then it's been it's been 100 lost seasons or 115 lost seasons and up until last year with no help from him having the 28th lowest budget for any mlb team out of 30, by the way, if you guys don't know, they come in with 101 wins based off the prospects and the rookies that they've had. And finally, some of their players coming out and really performing on the center stage. People like Santander doing amazing. Austin Hicks coming out and performing like he always does in the last three years. This has been slowly growing. And now all of a sudden, David Rubenstein, Rubenstein, whatever you want to say it, he is now taking over a team that has 100 win potential. And Rubenstein has been known for spending money like crazy whether it is donations and helping his community he spent like 18.5 million dollars to to the lincoln Mem memorial in washington dc he's a baltimore native he grew up in baltimore he's been a baltimore orioles fan all of his life and he still resides in baltimore where he owns a company runs a company with a shared partner that's worth 400 billion dollars this guy has so much money that he's now the seventh richest mlb owner now there is a catch to all this um clearly he's already throwing money at stuff because the day this is announced we're making trades for some of the best pitchers in baseball a 101 win team is now way better with a former cy young award with starting pitcher with corbin burns i'm a huge fan of corbin burns i like him and he's already making his mark. I was saying, what is he going to do? What's going to happen? Well, during this deal, what he's paying for is 40% ownership right now with a group. That also includes a minority ownership with Cal Ripken Jr., probably one of the, his favorite people to watch back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And honestly, from 93 to 2000, John Angelos' dad, Peter Angelos is the one who acquired it. He, I think he paid $174 million for the Baltimore Ori Orioles. He purchased them for $174 million in 1993. And from 1993 to 2000, they were one of the most fun teams to watch. You grew up and then watched all baseball through the 90s. The Orioles were a team to watch. They had a really fun team. They had a beautiful park. Peter Angelos was really spending the money to make it happen until 2019 and things started kind of falling apart in the early 2000s and you know 2010s 2019 his son takes over now if you guys ever I don't know if you guys are dads mothers or anything out there but or even if you just watch Hollywood when your kids 
are just waiting for you to die so they can liquidate everything you've worked for and built because they don't give a shit about what you love. That's exactly what John Angelos is. Peter Angelos is 94. He's not doing well. He's on his way out. And part of the agreement that John Angelos put in front of him is that David Rubenstein, Rubenstein, however you want to say it, gets 40% ownership of the Orioles until his dad is dead. And then David Rubenstein gets the rest of the ownership. Bro, really? As, as much of a clear fuck you as you can say to your own dad to show that you never gave a shit about this team. This is the way to do it. On top of your antics where you're suspending broadcasters because they said something that you didn't like. For basically suspending them for absolutely no reason. For telling publicly to the fans saying, if we re-sign a player, a good player that we should keep, then we're going to increase ticket prices because I don't want to pay for this anymore. John Angelos has been a cancer to Baltimore. And I, I've, I've, I'm so tired of making videos saying I apologize to the fans because they deserve better. But this was an exact example of a team that deserved better. And unlike the Oakland A's, which again, my condolences to you guys, finally, finally a team is saved. And I want to thank David Rubenstein for purchasing along with a few others there's it's obviously a, a group of them to be able to handle this it, if you do good by the fans if you invest the money into the players if you truly want to win a world series and bring it to baltimore i hope that you spend money and actually show the fans that baltimore orioles could be a legendary team especially in the 2020s this is your chance and I'm really hoping you do. And I have no reason to believe that you won't because of the fact that I've seen what you've contributed in charities. The, the fact that you've joined multiple billionaires out there, including Bill Gates, to pledge to help your communities. And what better way to help your community is by doing it selfishly. Let's be honest. You're taking ownership into your favorite baseball team growing up, your home team, your community. You're taking an investment into that and you want to spend money in that way that makes you happy, makes you proud. And then it also draws more people in and it makes you money in return. That is genius business right there. And that's the reason why you're rich. And I'm jealous that you're rich, but you know what? I'm not, I don't deserve it. I, I really, I do not deserve it at all. You're doing exactly what Mr. Fisher should have done. And that's invest in a team to make them great and then get a bigger return. When you have a major fan base that just wants to keep their team that's been there since 1968. You're doing better. And I hope you do better than Fisher as we move forward. But I'll read off your statement. Quote, I look forward to working with all the Orioles owners, players, and staff to build upon the incredible success the team has achieved in recent seasons. It's just last year. Our collective goal will be to bring World Series trophy back to the city of Baltimore. To the fans, I say we do it for you and can't do it without you. Thank you for your support. I hope that we can support you and I really hope you mean everything. I have no reason to not believe you. I think you investing $1.725 billion of your money into something like this tells me that you're dedicated to making it bigger, making it better, and doing the exact opposite of what John Angelos has been doing. But I guess I shouldn't even worry about it because not a few hours after this is really getting released, I'm seeing moves already being made to make the team better. Corbin Burns going to the Orioles is something I'm looking forward to. I'm going to get that signed jersey because that is awesome. I am starting to become a big fan of the Orioles. I've I've adopted the Padres and the, the Diamondbacks. As you can see, I'm a Padres fan. But the Orioles have always been a Cal Ripken fan. I have plenty of his things. Just this move alone could make me actually a true Orioles fan, especially since I don't really have a team that I root for in the AL East. This is it. I'm I'm definitely on board if this can happen. We can ref quickly reflect on what's happened in the last few, few years. Let's start back in 2018. So 2018, they were 47 and 115 for the record. Pretty bad. In 2019, they went 54 and 108. Slightly better, but still not very not very good at all. And 2020 was a short season due to COVID. They went 25 and 35, which is still probably equivalently as bad. And they finished fourth. In 2021, they went 52 and 110. So even worse than the year before. 
but this is where they start really building everything. Their first baseman, Ryan Mountcastle, was able to play his first 100-game season where he hit 33 home runs, slashing 255, 305, and 487 as a rookie. Austin Hayes, who I believe joined the Baltimore Orioles in 2017, finally got his chance where he became a star outfielder playing in his first 100-plus game season where he was able to uh, hit 22 home runs, slashing 256, 308, and 461. Also joining him for the first first 100 uh 100 game season was An- uh Anthony Santander who hit 18 home runs that season but then coming into 2022 um he was a major slugging stick he had 33 home runs and he basically maintained the batting average of 240 and a 256 batting average in 2023 and now he's he's the one that everybody talks about as the powerhouse of the outfield for the Orioles uh, they finished the AL East with an 83 and 79 record in 2022, where they also added on uh, Kyle Bradish, Yannier Cano, who didn't really break out until 2023. But then they also introduced uh, basically what everybody's calling the Buster Posey of the Orioles, which is Adley Rushman, who's his jersey's back there. I'm, I'm I'm serious. I'm getting I'm getting into this this Orioles thing. Like, what's up, guys? I'm a fan. I'm a bandwagon. Let's do this. Who wants a bandwagon with me? I'm in. But things turned around for the bats, for the fielders. Just overall, the team just did amazing last year, where they were able to finally make the playoffs since 2014 with the obvious 101 wins and 61 losses. But they also last year were able to add rookie Grayson Rodriguez, who did amazing. James McCann joined on uh, Ryan O'Hearn, who we'll talk about in a little bit because I'm a little bit I'm not exactly sure if he's going to be starting at first base or if he's going to be DHing. It really depends on Mount Castle. And then, of course, the rookie breakout of the rookie of the year, like everything about him mr gunnar henderson insane player huge asset to the team i also want to point out some of the things that people they made their they either made their major league debut or they're going to next year and i don't know exactly if they're going to be playing as a starter or not but kerstad his first hit of his career last year was a home run in the mlb spoke a lot to me the guys that do that typically come out and they do very well i know that's skeptical on some people i mean your franchise might have someone who started off the mlb with a home run but they didn't make anything of themselves but i always take that as a good sign because he was a high draft pick and he has been very impressive when he did play his few games in 2023 but then also eligible for 2024 jackson holiday the number one prospect the son of matt holiday who's been showing a slugfest down in the minors and he's anticipated to come up this year whether or not he's going to play where he's going to play i do not know how they're going to fit that in there but this team is stacked and they've been building it for a while on the front office and with all the restrictions they've had over angelos and i am so excited to see that not to mention this year during the off season they were able to add uh kimbrell from the phillies a little bit questionable because he's been a little bit rough in the last couple of years but felix bautista the six foot eight monster of a closer is still having tommy john will be out for the whole season so it was very necessary for them to pick up a closer john Hader, a little bit out of budget before this point and unfortunately he signed already but they at least have a closer they can rely on the orioles also just finished building their dominican republic prospect stadium and uh, I guess uh, we want to call it warehouse or whatever you a facility is probably the best way to put it. Um, there's been a lot of weird things going on with the Dominican Republic with the age fraud signing that's been going on. I don't know which teams are involved, but I will say hopefully David Rubenstein will look into this a little bit because if there's any weird stuff going on, if you're signing players, you're signing kids, you're signing 13 year olds, 11 year olds to only be dedicated to your organization so you can curate them when the rules say they have to be 16 at minimum bad reputation is not good in mlb ownership so keep an eye on that i hope the orioles names don't come up as far as that fraudulent signing for kids it's not okay if you guys are wondering why i'm a little bit harping on that because these development programs especially for pitchers um i talk studios did a video about tommy john lately and he did an excellent job i strongly recommend you guys go check him out um but you'll see at least my stance on it and it is the fact that they're overworking kids to where when they make it to the majors they have serious serious injuries that you should never have to inflict on a child I'll just add this this final thought. Angelos was going into the 2024 season with the Orioles out of 30 teams having the 28th lowest payroll. Is that the way to say it? They're second to last when it comes to spending. I believe their budget was $70 million, which is nuts that they're able to pull off 100 wins with that budget. And 
capped off to them, which is, makes me like them that much more because they're defining the odds. They're not just a bot team. This has got to be one of the biggest complaints, I think, from the fans in Baltimore because they could do so much more if they had the money, but they... And they have pulled off a lot. Unfortunately, they didn't win the ALDS last year, but maybe this year they'll have a chance. And with the addition of Corbin Burns, that's a huge thing. I really need to look into the contract. We'll end it there with that. But my final thoughts on this, Angelus was cheap. He wanted to profit his max. He obviously didn't care about the team. He's selling it now that he's planning for his own father to die. It says a lot about him as a character and also him as an owner. So I think fans should really look forward to this new venture that's happening this next decade for the Baltimore Orioles because they might be the next dynasty we're all looking for. And with moves happening this quick, I'm very optimistic, and I'm probably going to watch a lot more of them. So nothing will happen until next week. Um, there needs to be a 75% approval among MLB owners for this deal to go through, but uh, Mr. Rubenstein will not be... Uh, majority owner he'll be a 40 percent ownership until mr angelos passes away for him to take over uh john angelos i guess is gonna, still gonna be like ceo or ceo or cco or something like that of the orioles i'm not exactly sure which part he's going to play i'm assuming it's only going to be for a couple of years so that he can get a grasp of how the organization works and operates and then also hopefully talk to the front office and say what do you guys wish that i could do for you what do you guys wish you had that i can benefit the team and then they can go that route. If he hasn't already done that, as I see the moves that are making with the Brewers and Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns is slated to become a free agent um, after the 2024 season. So this is a bite in the dark of trying to get a one season out of this guy. Now, if they make it really far and they are planning to have the budget to do so with the new ownership, then this could be a lead off to see hey, you perform for us and we're going to give you the option. We're going to offer you a big contract for you to come back. That is if he performs. So I see this as a win when it comes to the Orioles. They did lose DL Hall, who wasn't too bad this last year. He appeared in 18 games with the Orioles this last season. He put up a 3-0 record with a 3.26 uh, earned run average and a 1.19 zero whip so dl hall is a very good pitcher that the at least the brewers are picking up but a starting pitcher to go along with grayson rodriguez is very good for this orioles team now i don't know if they're going to make corbin burdens the ace but i'm going to assume so because he has finished in the top 10 for the cy young award win uh, pretty much every season from 2020 to last year orioles are making moves and i am so happy i need to get me a orioles jersey for sure not just uh purchases so if you guys like the video like it subscribe we're new we're building we just made it to 100 subscribers recently in the last couple days and we've been on for about 31 days 31 days now i love you all and go orioles at this point see ya